introduce our keynote speaker now. Uh, you may have heard of him. He's an up-and-coming young man <laughs> who calls himself Dr. Carl. Uh, <laughs> he um, is probably our most famous and most loved scientist. Don't tell all the other scientists. Uh, he's an author. He has degrees in physics, maths, biomedical engineering, medicine and surgery, so like all of us. Um, and he's also one of Australia's 100 national living treasures. I didn't even know that was a thing, but now I'm very happy to have met one. Um, so please welcome to the stage Dr. Karl Kruschelnitzky. Hi guys, look, thank you very much for inviting me here. It gives me great pleasure to be here at Barfest, which I now know stands for the Festival of Bad Ad Hoc Hypotheses. And Alice, thank you for mentioning that this is the man. He was the one who started it up. And he's a professional curmudgeon, which basically means angry person and artist. And as you mentioned, back in 2013 at MIT, he put forward the hypothesis. This, uh, these are the official pictures that he put out about why babies are shaped like footballs, so that you can, in fact, kick them into another valley and thereby increase genetic diversity. He still keeps on going with his Saturday morning breakfast cereal. And he came up with something that was incredibly deep and insightful. He said, wait a minute, autism spectrum people are overrepresented in research science, but that means, and then suddenly you get the realisation from the other scientists, the OMG moment, and there you have it at the bottom of the screen, proof, <laughs> autism causes vaccines. <laughs> But the science doesn't just stop there. We're continuing our science week. Thank you very much, uh, Will Cox from SMH. Yep. And yeah, of course, we all know that the electricity thing is just a theory. You know, and the whole gravity thing, well, that was just made up by you know, watchers, Weight Watchers uh, as a conspiracy <laughs> theory. But the really big one that affects us all, the one that's lurking in the background and getting bigger and bigger all the time is the big global warming thing. If carbon dioxide is bad, why did God make us breathe it out? Well, luckily, <laughs> I've been in contact with a scientist in the sense that he has commentated upon me, I think favourably several times. I'm trying to make it an even dozen that I get commentated <laughs> on. And this um, scientific type uh, interpreter in 2012 wrote this wonderful article. And if I'll read out the second line for you. First, he says, the planet hasn't actually warmed for a decade or even 15 years, according to new temperature data, empirical or not. <laughs> By the way, just a little diversion. You don't talk about a hand handle because you use it with your hand, so it's a handle. You don't talk about a foot pedal because if you use your foot, it's a pedal, and if you're going to use it with your hand, then it's a handle. So you don't say foot pedal, you just say pedal. And you don't say empirical data because the definition of empirical is data which has been gathered by measurement. So it's like saying an ATM machine. Now, I think we know what I'm talking about, so I'll just go and leave them there. But getting back to the warming of the decade, you look back to the records which go all the way back to 1880, and what Mr Bolt was looking at was this latter period. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. And so what he's saying is that it hasn't warmed up at all <laughs> over that window, right? But uh, over here, to my, I'm an amateur, to my eye, it looks like it's been warming up. And, 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 and the scientists with their lab coats and their punsy PhDs, they'll just go there and they'll draw a line through the data and say it's warming up. But Mr. Bolt has a depth to him a mathematical prowess of which I was not assuming he had before. And he looks at the data carefully, minusculely. And over here you see one, two cooling trends, three, four, five, <laughs> six cooling trends. <laughs> well, think about it. You've got one warming trend, but you've got six cooling trends. <laughs> it's obviously six times better. Now, Mr Bolt, I, I think I've worked out what's going on. I asked Norman Swan at the ABC, and he advised me that it might be some sort of medical condition, so I suddenly realised that I indeed had spent a couple of years of my life working as a biomedical engineer when, with Jackie Joy, I designed and built this machine to pick up electrical signals off the human retina and thereby diagnose certain eye diseases. And so my take on it, with regard to Mr Bolt, is that he's suffering, and we all have diseases, 
among us. I've got three genetic diseases. And, and we think that he has bilateral hemianopsia. Let me take you through this. Opsia, opsia means to see, and an is a group, group, Greek root meaning not, so he can't see. And hemi means half, and bilateral means it's both of his eyes, both sides of his brain. <laughs> this, this tragic condition is woefully widespread. It affects half the population. Males almost universally have it. Females never have. <laughs> Some of you might know it more colloquially as um, domestic blindness. <laughs> Honey, where's the socks? I can't see the dirty dishes in the sink. The bathroom's dirty, you say? Can't see a thing. And in his case, whereas the scientists see all the ups and downs, he can only see half which suits him. And, and, and look, I don't want you to be mean to him. I'm waiting for the next commentaries he makes upon me because you shouldn't be mean. You catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And in fact, I have a confession to make. I have my own major problems. I'm just outing myself to the audience. It's been a hard worry to go. From harddawn.com. Does this flamboyant Australian doctor hold the key? Yeah, I'm responsible for World War III. <laughs> yeah, profane, yep. There I am, a bit more of me. Yeah, yeah. Infamous, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, climate change theology with a small T, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Warlock, yeah, that's me, yeah. I, I, <laughs> the chemtrail, ke, the chemtrails. Did anybody see how I got busted on Media Watch for the chemtrails? Like a knife through the heart, that was. <laughs> but the chemtrails, like, like, I mean, they show you photos of the actual chemicals. The chemicals that have come out of the jet, back of the jet engines, they're not just, as the scientists would have you believe, crystals of ice, but they are behaviour modification chemicals, but also... Those chemicals are there to both stop and start global warming, depending on which side of the fence you're on. <laughs> now, you, you might say, are these chemicals which are in every jet just happening to be where the seats are, and isn't this part of a test flight so they can mimic the weight of the humans? Man, you just don't get it, do you? <laughs> the chemicals want windows so they can have a good life as well. Why should only they have it? And then it goes on with this other sentence down here. It says, talking about me on News24, the sharp viper-like tongue. Illumina Look, see that David Igg, what's he on about? I'm part of the super elite. I'm up there with the Illuminati. In fact, even worse. Like Queen Elizabeth, I am a shape-shifting reptile. <laughs> I am, yes. And have you ever seen a photo of me eating live humans on Earth anywhere? No, no, there's no cannibalistic photos of me anywhere. That's proof of it. And I'd like to just sort of amplify, like, I, I am the Lizard King! <laughs> and now, with, the, with apologies to the Simpsons. We found this one swimming naked in the fermentarium. I am the Lizard Queen! For this, and this, and then these. Oh, thank you, Doctor. No, oh, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> The confession just keeps on coming on. Yes, I'm a doctor as an honorary title given to Western society since the 1600s because of my medical training. But in the university system, the only people who deserve to get called doctor are PhDs. Where are the PhDs in the universe? You truly are the people who deserve to be called doctor, and I'm just a shameful MBBS. And even though I did spend some time, this is before I turned into the shapeless sack of potatoes that I am. And, but, but, but hang on, there's a twist, there's a twist. You see, I went up to the University of the Sunshine Coast and pranced around on stage, and then they gave me this bit of paper. And if you look at the bit of paper, it says over here, in small print over here, honorary, honorary. So still, I'm not a PhD doctor like you guys, but I am, in fact, a doctor. But then the thing is, does that mean now that I'm doctor, doctor, Carl? I don't know. Let's just check. I've got a reference paper here. Dr. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. Need no pill, gonna cure my ears. I got a bad case of loving you. And I hereby open bar fest. Thank you very much.
science communicator and our reptile overlord. Uh, that was amazing. You learn something new every day. Well, we're going to crack on with the show.